Hi, it's Cece from CC Restyled, and I am going to show you how to do some basic blending with Paint Couture um, acrylic um, resin based paints. And they're a little bit different than your typical chalky style furniture paint um, in the fact that uh, they're, like I said, acrylic resin based, so they're a little bit different. They apply a little bit different, but um, not in a bad way. Um, the finish is less less porous feeling it's still matte but it's a little smoother less gritty and chalky it's more of a smooth um oh um i don't want to say satin but almost to a satin finish so you want to apply it with different brush um synthetic i always use synthetic for applying paint no matter what paint, paint it is always synthetic that's how you help prevent brush strokes and um in particular, for the um, paint couture, I like to use blue ice brushes. Zebra brushes are great. Um, there's a variety of different uh, synthetic brushes you can get even at the hardware store that work well, but my favorite is the blue ice. For whatever reason, it's just, they go together like, you know, peanut butter and jelly. So um, we're gonna start by painting a base coat, okay? So this that we're painting, it's a little bit different than a typical Thing that we a typical piece of furniture we might be blending so let's just say normally I would paint this whole thing one color and then I would pick my colors highlights shadows accent colors that I want to blend in with it and do that but on this particular piece this inset area is going to be its own color with its own blending and then the outside is going to be its own color with its own blending does that make sense so it's going to be a little bit uh, different but the, the actual technique is the same. So um, I'm not being super careful. I wanna make sure I fill in my inset area here, but I'm not being super careful because after this dries and we're done painting it, I'm gonna tape it off and then we'll do the outside. So um, you don't have to, I suppose, but I'm gonna be careful and I want a nice crisp line. So I'm gonna tape it off. Um, paint Couture is self-leveling. Okay, I know a lot of paints say they're self-leveling, but this is really self-leveling paint, okay? Notice I don't have any sort of mister bottle or anything like that. I don't need to spray it with anything to keep it wet so that the, um, you know, so that the self-leveling properties will happen. It just does, okay? And as long as you don't overwork it. Any paint overworked will create brush strokes. So, um, oops, that might have been a little bit much there. All right, so let's go ahead and let this first coat dry, and then we will do our blending on the second coat, okay? So, again, I just want to re reiterate, this is the first coat. Do you see that coverage? That coverage is amazing. Like, it's, I don't have to do a second coat, okay? Like, I probably could get away with one. I'm a two coat kind of gal when it comes to my paint but look at that that's one coat <clears throat> and the coverage is impeccable I mean it's perfect oh there's a little spot where I got my brush my bristles but whoop, check it out that's one coat okay one smooth beautiful covered amazing coverage coat it's a little reflective obviously because it's wet but it's amazing the coverage is just to die for can you see it okay so we're gonna let that dry and then we will go and we will work on our second coat which is the coat which we will blend in some shadows okay so this is just basic blending um you know starting with the color and blending in some shadows and or highlights um easy peasy beginner type blending so uh, hopefully you can um, figure it out if you're having trouble or um, if you've never blended you know paint couture before hopefully this will help so um, we're gonna let that dry okay okay so our little uh, inset area is dry now and again I want to reiterate that this is one coat one fantastic beautiful coverage 100 on point top of the game coat look at that 
It's opaque all day long. I just can't get over it. I can't get over it. Anyway, so um, this color is called Notorious BLU from my Remix collection. Um, uh, some colors that I put together for a special line um, by Paint Couture. So same great Paint Couture paints, but special colors picked by moi because, you know, we like colors. All right, so we're gonna move on to the second coat now. That's when the fun starts because we're gonna blend it blend. There is our notorious BLU, okay? And of course we've got our, we're gonna use the same brush. And then for the color we're gonna blend in, so <clears throat> depending on whether you're blending in highlights or shadows or both will determine the color that you blend in with it. So we're gonna do uh, shadows in the corners here called a vignette. So it's when you shadow in the corners and kind of frame in an area. So we're gonna vignette, and for that we will want a darker color, because usually shadows are darker, right? And highlights are lighter. So sometimes I'll pick a little bit lighter of a color and I'll go right through the center, and we'll do that on another video, but for this one, we're just gonna do some basic shadowing, basic shading, blending goodness, okay? Keep it easy. All right, so for that, I'm gonna choose a you can choose like a darker blue or a gray or even black if you are feeling froggy. Um, the easiest colors to blend are two that are in the same kind of family. So I would pick like a navy blue or a darker of uh, this bright blue um, to shade in the shadows. Um, I actually chose, well, I'm just gonna do a gray. Okay, so gray will work, black will work. You just wanna be very easy on the black and um, yeah, any, anything darker really that's in the same kind of family. So any blues, grays, black. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and open that and I'm just gonna use a slightly smaller brush, okay? Because we wanna get in those little corners. Corners, corners, corners. And we wanna grab a shop towel to wipe the excess paint off our brush. So I'm gonna grab a shop towel real quick. And basically on our second coat, you know, you can blend on your first coat. Sometimes I do, usually I don't, but sometimes I do. It, it doesn't really make a huge difference unless you're blending colors that are very drastically different. Then I blend first coat and second coat, you know, to add to that depth and in case any of it shows through, then it's not, you know, looking funky. But when they're this similar, I just um, blend on the second coat. Does that make sense? Close colors, you know, blend on the second coat. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with my second coat. I'm just gonna paint it on just like I did my first coat. And um, when you're blending, you wanna, you wanna work in small sections at a time. So this size section that I'm working on right now, you really don't wanna work in much bigger of an area at once, um, unless you get really comfortable with it and you are okay with how quick you can blend and, and all that, because you don't want the paint to dry up on you, okay? Paint drying up on you is not your friend when you're blending, okay? Not your friend. So um, with other types of paints, you can mist with water, okay? Or squirt or mist, how, whatever, to get water on there to keep your paint wet. Um, you, don't wanna, you don't wanna spray paint couture with water or mist it with water, none of that. If you need longer opening, open time, you can add um, some extender to the paint or you can even spray it on um, or get you some Floetrol and add it into your paint before you, um, start this process so if it starts to dry up on you if you're talking too much like I am then you just you know spray it on or it's already mixed in your paint so you're good to go but I'm just gonna keep moving instead of more talking okay there we go so that's good that's good all right so now that we've got our second coat on we are gonna just take our gray which is shale stone just want to get a little bit on my brush okay I'm using a smaller brush like I said Get a little bit on there, a little bit on there. See, not much. And um, I'm just gonna go ahead and start in the middle and I'm gonna make like a triangle, okay? Basically a triangle for all intents and purposes, just like this, okay? And got my triangle happening. Okay, and I'm gonna wipe the excess paint off my brush. 
because otherwise it'll just muddy it up a little bit. It'll muddy it up. You don't want your, you know, your blend all muddied up or your brush to push around, you know, colors that are basically mud because they mix together too much. So see how I'm just, I started with my, um, my triangle, okay? And then I just slowly started blending the color back out into the background, okay? So just gentle strokes, you can kind of do this way. You can bring it out as far as you want it, um, but you don't have to work super fast, okay? Sometimes I do, I get in the habit of working fast for um, live tutorials, which, you know, you only have so long because people's attention span, you know? But, there you go. Okay, so that is, can you see the shading? Shading happening? Yes, you can, yes you can. So. When that dries, it's gonna darken up quite a bit, so it's gonna look darker than it does now or more prominent than it does now. So I can choose to do every corner if I want, or I can choose to do opposite corners. Let's start with opposite corners and see how that looks, okay? So we'll start with our little triangle, okay? Little triangle. And then we'll kind of bring it out as far as we want it, this way and that way, okay? Then we'll just kind of Brush it right into the background with some gentle strokes. I'm gonna wipe my excess paint off my brush. We don't wanna push around muddy paint, no muddy paint here. Okay, so we're just gonna gently brush that into the background with some gentle strokes until, until all of our harsh brush strokes are gone, no streaks, everything's nice and faded, you know? Nice little fadey blend, okay? So that is two corners. Like I said, it'll dry a little bit darker as you'll see in just a moment. Um, but I usually do four corners. Nothing wrong with that. Let's just do four corners, why not? Okay. It doesn't have to be symmetrical or anything like that. There's no really rules. Um, you know, I kind of like to think of um, shading and highlighting with wall blending, I, I like to think of it as a surface that a light source is shining down on or at or whatever. And so I think about where my light source would be coming from, okay? So let's just say it's coming from, you know, right here and it's pointing at this piece. The lightest part's gonna be in the middle and then as you, you know, get towards the edge, that's where you're gonna have your shadows, right? Because your light source is here pointing at it. Um, whereas if, let's say, Let's say our light source is shining down on it, like a spotlight, okay? Like on artwork or something. That means you're gonna have the lightest part up here and you're gonna have more of a shadow down here, right? So let's see what that would look like. If, we're, if we have a light source shining from down, down onto the piece, we're gonna have a bigger shadow at the bottom. So what does that mean? It means we start out with a bigger triangle in the corner, okay? Bigger triangle, like that. Okay, big a triangle, and then we just blend it right on in. Same process, just bigger, okay? Bigger equals more, okay? All right, so, and I'm not, again, I'm not worrying about these edge parts, so I'm gonna tape those off and paint those separately. So let's go ahead and make this side match, okay? We got our triangle. about how big we want to take it and then we'll just kind of brush those right back in there and I can feel my paint starting to dry up on me so it's probably a good good timing it's a good thing we're about to be done with this little blend because it's um, you know you only have so long while the paint is open you know and workable well wet basically and then once it starts to dry up that's when you start to get brush strokes so I think we're right at the tail end of that lifespan there and that is our shading Blendy blend, shady shade. Um, and I will show you, again, <clears throat> once that dries, I'll show you what it looks like when it's darkened up and uh, no more reflective wet paint. Um, it'll look uh, not, not much different, but darker, more prominent. So um, we're gonna go ahead and do the other side, same way. And then I will show you that all dry. So 
it's all dry, our inset area is all dry, and I've gone ahead and I've taped it off. If you have prepped properly, as in cleaned well, sanded, um, primed if necessary, then your tape should not pull up your um, paint. I get a, a lot of people ask that, and the answer is, if you've prepped well, it will not pull up your paint. So, um, let me get this little area here, and then we're gonna go ahead and start painting the outside, which as you can see, I've got a first coat here. We'll go ahead and do the first coat on this side. And then we will move around to the front where we will do the shading on the second coat. So we're kind of working in sections, little areas, that's okay. As long as I know what section I'm on and what area I'm on, that's, that's what matters, right? As long as you're organized. So um, this color is called um, Bluehemian Rhapsody. It's um, part of my remix collection colors that I put together specially for Paint Couture. So there's six colors in a pearl metallic, which is really, really pretty. It's called Pearl Jammin' and it's this iridescent, pearlescent, bluish purple, depending on how you look at it in a light bluish purple, blurple, if you will. So we're gonna go ahead and Oh, let's just go ahead and do our first coat here. And again, to be honest, like, oh, oh God, really? Did I just do that? Sometimes I get a little flappy, especially when I'm trying to hurry on videos. It's true, it's true. But we'll go ahead and wipe that up. And fix that. gosh maybe touch that up um after we're all done here and pull the tape up maybe not because we're putting transfer all over that. this is going to be a patchwork kind of look um to this piece that's why the inside area is such a drastic color from this outside um Bohem bohemian raft city is this kind of cornflower blue um, periwinkle type color. Such a drastic difference. I'm going for like a quilted kind of look, you know? So quilts use lots of different patterns, colors, you know, um, all of that. And somehow when you sew them all together, they work, right? So that's kind of what our basis is here for this piece. So as long as I can be careful and not screw up too much and drip too much more paint, We'll be good, right? Okay. But the coverage is just phenomenal, right? This is, coverage is amazing, you see it? They do not skimp on the old pigments at Pink Couture, do they? They don't. <laughs> they do not skimp on those pigments. So. I'm gonna go ahead and finish out this side with the coat number one. And then we will, like I said, move along to coat number two on the front. Blendy blend in. Now that we've got our first coat done all over, <coughs> we can actually start. Oh, let's start. I guess we can start in the front here. Um, I do want to show you quickly, if I can, the top. So I was able to blend the top. It's still wet, as you can see. Oh, gosh, not all the way there. Um, see the two opposing corners that are um, shadowed there? So that's how subtly I did the top. So I think I'm going to stick with, um, I don't know. Let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes, shall we? Shall we? All right, so I'm just going to start, how about it, right here and through the middle? I'm going to start right in the middle, work my way out. You don't have to even start on this side and go that way, whatever. Um, work my way out and... 
second coat. And remember, you can blend on the first coat um, if you want. These colors are so subtle that I did not. And then I'm actually gonna take my brush that I was using for the gray. And here up top where I had blended some gray in, you can kind of see it a little bit. See that? Oh, gosh, oops. Um, so it is needing to be blended back in because I kind of, I hit it with my Blue Hemian Rhapsody, so I need to just blend that in gently. There we go, boom. No problemo. So let's go ahead and move down this way. Oh, that's better. Okay, make sure I got all my spots, make sure I didn't miss anywhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and start coming down here. this pillar here make sure you get down in the details get them deets get them deets and let's go ahead and um as we're coming down this way i'm gonna pause right here real quick okay pause right here and then i'm gonna take my gray which is the shell stone it's kind of like a got a little bit of a greenish tint to it, greenish tint gray. And I'm gonna do just a little bit of shading right here under this lip, right here under this um, lip of the top of the table. So I'm just kind of almost dry brushing on this darker color. Okay, and then kind of like tapering it down. Okay, like, like a funnel, taper it down. But I also want to make sure that it's blending in on my top too. So be mindful of what else you have going on here. Okay, so we're just going to go blend this in. Boom, 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 boom. Wipe off our brush so we're not muddying it up. Make sure we get this up here. So it's all nice and blended still. Looking good, looking good. Okay. All right, so now we just gotta blend out these edges a little bit. See how easy it is to just kind of feather it out with your brush, okay? As long as your brush isn't soaked with paint and you're wiping off that excess, you just feather it out. Feather it out, feather it out. You know, like 80s hair, feather it out. Boom, okay, and that is our Shading on our front, shading on our front, super easy, right? How's that for, for a little bit of just shadowing in, just a bit of interest, some depth, some movement, all of the above. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and come over here a little bit. Um, we're gonna go ahead and let's work our way, oh shucks, let's just stick to the front for now, okay? Stick it to the front. And Go ahead and come down here. Cross this little crossbar here and get him his second coat. And I think we'll leave this just like this. I don't think I'm gonna do any shading on this little area in the center here.
This paint is so creamy and so smooth. It's like, ugh, like it's like yogurt. It's so creamy and smooth. It's amazing. So, all right, down here is going to be the fun part. All right, these little deets here. That'll be the fun part for some shading, some blendy blend. Um, let's go ahead and work our way down. Finish working our way down. Right on down the line. I'm getting paint all over my elbow somehow. I'm a messy painter. I just know it. I get paint everywhere. I know you know what I'm talking about, most of you, so. Don't pretend. Don't pretend like you're not a messy painter, okay? I see you. I see you. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and get this little guy here. Okay, let's see. And on this particular piece, I'm going inside of the um, drawer wells because the way <coughs> the drawers are situated, they will show just a little bit inside that. So I don't want wood showing. So I want to make sure I finish out at least an inch or so inside there, depending on your drawers, but an inch or so on these is plenty. All right, so now we're going to do our second coat down here. When I am, when I am painting details, it's really mo mostly about the pouncing, okay? You got to kind of really pounce to get all in there. You don't want to miss any spots. Then later, when you're going to seal it, or you're all done, you look at it and you see the missed spots, you're like, dang it, I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back over that. Shoot. So, that's a bummer. So, let's just try to nip those in the bud from the start and get all of our bases covered. Bases, not faces. Okay, bases covered. As I fling paint at my face. Okay, so... It helps if you look at it from all angles, so side to side, up down, because you will always miss a spot if you don't look at it from all the angles. Always, 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 no matter how hard you try, you will miss a spot. See, you miss a spot. It's all about the pouncing, baby. All about the pouncing on the details. I'm telling you what, you gotta pounce like a cougar. See, more spots in us. More spots. See, as perfect as you think you are, you're not. You miss spots. It's just truth. Okay, pounce, 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 pounce. Okay, get down in there and those little orifices there. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, and then we'll just finish out this little front piece. Okay. Look at it all from all the angles. Make sure we didn't miss the spots. We didn't miss the spots, miss the spots, miss the spots. All right, there's one spot. Okay, we good, we good. So now we're gonna do our shading with our shale stone, okay? So we got our shale stone gray and we is gonna, we is gonna, while this is still wet, we got our little blendy brush and let's see. See if we can get a better little angle here, <clears throat> which would have been awesome <clears throat> if I would have done this before I put my wet paint on, but it's all good. If it dries up, we'll just touch her up, won't we? There we go. Is that better? Is that the better? Yes, no, maybe so. <clears throat> well, we're going to have to roll with it, so there you go. That's the best we're going to get right now. All right, so we're going to just dip our brush in a little bit, kind of like the dry brushing we talked about, you know, dip it in the paint and get the excess off on the edge of the jar or on a napkin or towel or shop towel or whatever, not on your brush. And then I'm going to like, uh, I don't know, let's just do some little shading guys here maybe. 
maybe here, a little triangle guys, okay. See what I'm doing? And, and make sure you try to get in those details too. It would look awfully strange if you didn't shadow in the details because that's usually where details or where shadows live, right? In little crevices and um, holes and carvings and details and recessed areas, right? So we're just kind of blending that gently back into the background. Just like that. And I think that um, this shape has gotten a little bit carried away from how I originally intended it. So I'm just going to grab my um, Bohemian wrap, uh, Blue Bohemian Rhapsody, and I'm just going to dial it back a little bit right here. Remember how I usually start with that um, triangle? <clears throat> I'm going to just dial it back to where it's more of a triangle like that, see? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Boom. That is so freaking easy, isn't it? It's actually pretty satisfying, you know? It's, once you get the hang of it, it's just very soothing of a process. Soothing. Okay, and we'll just blend that out a little bit better. Nice and gentle. Gently, gently, gently. And boom. Boom, shake the room. Now we're going to come back over on this side and do a similar type deal. Except I'm going to have to probably touch it up with a little more blue paint because I've been talking and blending and it's drying up on me. Okay, and we don't mess with water, remember. Not going to be your friend with the paint couture. So we're just going to lightly... Touch it back up with a little bit more paint to get it wet again. Easy, easy peasy. Again, we're gonna grab a little bit of our, oops, see I'm gonna sit here and perfect this too. Do, are you a perfectionist? I'm like the laziest perfectionist I know, it's crazy. I like to perfect things, but I also like to get things if done efficiently. It's kind of a, really weird problem to have, right? All right, so let's do like we did on the other side, or at least intended to. We're gonna make a little triangle. Okay, triangle, triangle. And, boom. Got our little triangle, make the triangle, and we're just gonna blend it into the background, okay? Blend it right on in. Wipe our brush off just a little bit. Tell me to stop perfectionisting, perfectioningist, perfectionisting that corner over there. Okay, so we're gonna go back over here and just kind of add a little bit more of our Bohemian to kind of make that shadowy shape, that triangle, a little more apparent. Control it, manipulate it to look how we want it to. Okay, grab our gray again and just kind of. Blend it right back on into the background, into the blue hemian. All right, so that's good. That is good on our corners. So I'm actually gonna take my shale stone, my gray, and I'm gonna create some shadows kind of like around here, okay? Just following the shape of this, shape of this little guy here, okay? And I'm just going to gently how about, how about let's go around down here too. Yeah, 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 buddy. All right, so now, <clears throat> excuse me, I am just gonna blend that 
um, gray right back into the Bohemian. Just blendy blend it right back on in. Very gentle, you don't have to get crazy. As long as your paint's wet enough that you can blend it in, you're good to go. Blending on details seems a little scary, right? But it's actually super easy. You know, you just kind of gently blend it right on in. And then I see some spots where I could have, um, you know, it could be blended a little bit better, but it's starting to dry up. So I'm just take my blue hemian and go back in over those spots. And just kind of touch them up till they are blended to my liking. Boom. Yes, I use my fingers sometime. Nature's paintbrushes they are. Am I right? Am I right? Okay, so. Oh, I hear motorcycles outside. Can you hear that? It's like the dead of winter right now. People are out on motorcycles. Um, okay. Dead of winter in the Midwest, I should say. Okay, so once you're done kind of perfectionist-ing, or whatever you want to call it, then we shall move on, okay? So, here we go. That's basically the gist of how we are blending the whole thing. Subtle, yet effective. See that? Subtle, yet effective. She's going to be so cute. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and move on to the sides and then we'll let it dry and um that be it that is our basics to blending with pink couture <laughs> 